welcome to raw online today i am going to discuss you on the management of cardiac arrhythmias and uh, it's a very important one and uh, the competency which we are going to discuss today is the at the end of the lecture the student should be able to classify the antiarrhythmic drugs and the mechanism of action uses and adverse effects of class 3 antiarrhythmic drugs basically we have got four class of antiarrhythmic drugs but the class 3 is most important the one important drug is amiodarone and uh, we have to see the mechanism of action uses and adverse effects of lignocaine which is a class 1 drug and uh, also the uh, uses and adverse effects of adenosine and uh, justify the role of beta blocker as antiarrhythmic agents so uh, there are four classes actually the class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 and this beta blocker falls under the class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs so the outline will be first we are going to see the electrophysiology of the heart and the genesis of cardiac arrhythmias as well as the type of arrhythmias so in part 1 of this lecture we are going to see the first three things and part 2 the continuation of this lecture we will be seeing the management of cardiac arrhythmias the four uh, classes of antiarrhythmic drugs so the first thing is electrophysiology of the cardiac rhythm so for example the in the cardiac tissues if you take you have got two types of tissue actually and one is for the conducting tissue the conducting means the name itself suggest the impulse are conducted for the impulse to be conducted there should be a impulse generation so the impulse has to be generated somewhere and which is commonly the pacemaker sa node and that has to be transmitted through the course actually for example from sa node it goes through the so the av node through the internodal tract and then from the av node it reaches the bundle of his and you have got the right bundle and left bundle and then finally it reaches the purkinje tissue and to excite the cardiac cell so the, this is the conducting tissue or the pacemaker tissue the other type is for the contractile tissue once the impulse reaches the terminal end of the purkinje fibers and also the each and every cell of the myocardium has to be uh, depolarized and then they go in for contraction so the atria will contract ventricle will contract so those forms the contractile tissue so basically two types of tissue one is the conducting tissue and the other one is a contractile tissue before going into the antiarrhythmic drugs we need to know about the action potential of the cardiac myocardial cell so what is the action potential in atrium and in ventricle there is a slight difference in between these two so we are going to see one by one so the first physiology of the heart the normal conduction pathway is if you see here this is the sa node which is on the right atrium okay almost on the uh, junction of the superior vena cava the right atrium so this sa node is called the pacemaker and where it generates the action potential and from there it delivers through the internodal tract internodal tract will be there and also through the atrial muscle and then finally reaches the av node here and this av node you have got a small checkpoint it does not allow all the impulse coming from the sa node SA node can generate even uh, 120 or uh, 140, 160 impulses. It can generate, but this AV node has got some refractiveness here, where it controls only and then allows only 70 to 80 beats per minute through the his bundle. This is the right bundle and left bundle branch, and finally you can see the Purkinje system here, where it is uh, traveled along the ventricular myocardium, and finally the end of the Purkinje fibers reaches the endocardial space on both sides so this is what how the conduction system it has been designed right whereas the contractile i told you it's a ventricular muscle both the left and right ventricle also the atrial muscle so that is a contractile tissue so this is a purkinje fibers here so other types of conduction that occurs between the myocardial cells where when a cell is depolarized adjacent myocardial cell depolarizes along with it so this is also one cell gets activated the surrounding cells also get activated and finally the conduction has to be uniformly supplied to all the myocardial cells so that there should be a uniform contraction of the myocardium so this is the normal conduction pathway so coming to the action potential of the heart this is very important once if you understand this action potential 
then the treatment will be easier because all the drugs is going to target on different phases of this action potential. So the action potential is different for ventricular myocyte as well as the pacemaker cell that is a SA node. So if you take the ventricular myocyte action potential, you have got five phases are there. So it starts with a phase 0, 1, 2, 3 and finally ends with the phase 4. The all in these phases, there are different ionic movements happens, okay, and thereby it produces a single heartbeat, okay. So after this phase four, again next uh, heartbeat starts. So this is what how the uh, the impulses comes from this SA node traveling to the uh, ventricular muscle and then finally going for contract. So this ventricular myocyte action potential we are going to see in detail first. Then we will see about the SA node action potential, there is a slight difference here. So coming to the ventricular action potential or you can call it as a non-pacemaker action potential where I told you the phase 0. So phase 0 is nothing but the fast upstroke, the rapid upstroke, okay, it is mainly due to the entry of the sodium ions. So normally what happens, you know the resting membrane potential of the ventricular myocyte is minus 90 millivolt. So what happens, the initial sodium entry, the rapid entry will bring that more negative value to minus 80, from minus 90 to minus 80 it will bring. Then actually due to the further entry of the sodium ions, then the slowly it reaches the threshold potential that is minus 80 millivolt. From there it quickly ascends to the peak. and it crosses the 0 millivolt and reaches up to plus 30. So more the positive ions entering into the cells, so the more the less the negative potential inside the cell. So that is why at this point, the if you see the membrane potential, it will be plus 30 millivolt. And what happens after that, the sodium ions gets closed. And the potassium, the phase 1, there will be a, a early repolarization and due to the rapid efflux of potassium ions. So that is why it forms a little bit of a phase 1 here, small thing. And then normally this graph will be a little bit dome shaped will be coming here. 